Hello, and welcome to the world of Dale Rowney's F&W Acrylic Inks. My name is Barbara Donahay, and I've been working with these inks for a long time. They're highly pigmented and used by artists of all kinds. Calligraphers, airbrush artists, pen and ink artists, textile artists, crafters that work with wood and plastic, and fine artists who work with canvas, paper, and metal. Since I work primarily in mixed media and art journals, you'll see me demo techniques in my journals. However, they're suitable for anyone who would like to work with the F&W acrylic inks. One of the things that I really like about working with these inks is how highly pigmented they are and the fact that they're water resistant on most surfaces. When I'm working in an art journal or on a mixed media piece, both of those qualities are really important. If I want to thin the color a little bit with water to make it more transparent, I can do that, but the fact that I'm going to start off straight from the bottle with something that's almost opaque is very important, and that pigment in there is what really makes that happen. Now there is so much pigment in these bottles that one of the things that you want to do is make certain that you shake them very well. You can see that it's a lot of it has settled here on the bottom, so I'm going to start shaking this bottom, bottle, rather, and you can see that the pigment starts to get distributed through the liquid. What I want to do is shake it enough so that I can see, and I can't, I'm not quite there yet, I can see the air bubbles on the bottom of the bottle. That tells me that I've got that pigment up off the floor of the jar, or the bottle rather, and it's being distributed through the liquid, and I'm just starting to see the bottles on there. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to shake, shake, shake until you've got that pigment all nicely distributed. Now I'm going to show you several techniques today, but something that's really easy and very straightforward, anyone can do this, is to pick up a brush and just paint them on a surface. You can see that I've got a background here in my art journal. This is watercolor paper. I've sprayed color on there. And then I've gone ahead and I've just stamped some leaves across the top. You can see that I've gone and I've started to paint these in a couple of different colors and I'm going to show you just how simple this is. So I'm going to slide this this way and put a little bit of color out. I'm going to use waterfall green and these have an eyedropper in the bottle, so you'll squeeze the eyedropper to fill it just like you would just about anything. I'm not going to put too much out here. This stuff goes a very long way, so that's a good thing. And in addition to the waterfall green, I have Hot Mama Red. Now both of these have been well shaken because I was using them previously. I don't want you to think I'm cutting corners here. It really is important to shake them. So I have just a small round brush. I've got a clean bucket of water off to the side, and I've just dipped my brush in a little bit of the water. I'm not going to thin this very much. I just want to, want my brush my brush rather not to be completely dry. So all I'm going to do is just come in and start really this is color by number. I'm just going to lay the color down and fill in this leaf. One of the things that you'll notice again because we're working with a product that has so much pigment in it, the stems that extend down into the leaves are going to get covered, but that's okay. I will show you how you can come back and you can repair that. Now one of the interesting things is that if you go outside the lines, which is something I tend to do quite frequently, I'm not a perfectionist, you can fix those outer lines as well. So I've rinsed the Hot Mama Red out of my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the Waterfall Green and I'm just going to kind of stroke it in here. Now this has been thinned a little bit more so I'm getting a little bit lighter version, lighter I mean in terms of depth of color because I've thinned it out, it tends to be a little bit lighter. I'm just going to rinse that out again, and my brush is a little too wet. So I'm going to come in here and pick up some more color, and I'm just going to stroke it in up here. Now the color itself, the Hot Mama Red, is still a little bit damp, so it's doing a little bit of blending for me right on its own. I can add more if I want, and let me show you if you want to start the opposite way and start with the Waterfall Green, you can obviously do that as well. It's just a little bit of dried pigment from the outside of the bottle. Again, very easy, very straightforward, but it gives such great results. I tend to work more with the pearlescent colors just because I enjoy the pearlescent effect so much, but the techniques that I'm showing you here today will work across the entire line. Don't feel as though you're confined to either the pearlescents or not. So you can see how easy it is to just stroke color on here kind of let the brush blending happen and it really you get great results without a lot of effort. So what happens when you've gone outside the lines? What I like to do, this is a pit pen, this is black ink, so pit makes India ink in their pens and it actually provides nice coverage. One thing that I didn't say, when I stamped this I used Stazon. You'll need to use something like it or archival ink. You don't want the stamped image to lift as you start to color it. So coming over here, these are some ones I did a little bit earlier, and you can see that the stem has more or less disappeared as it extends into the leaf.
but it's easy enough to correct that. You can just come back. Now I'm using a fine tip, which is a little bit heavier than these stamped images actually were, but it's no big deal. You can pick up an S, which is the super fine tip if you want, or you can just go for a little bit heavier coverage. Now I'm just kind of imitating this very sketchy lines that are here, and you can see that it's very easy to just go back and replace anything that you've covered. So this is one technique. There's very simple ones that anybody can do that I'm going to show you next. I like variety on the page spreads in my art journal, and one way to achieve that very easily is to use a different technique to apply the color to your background. The page spread that you saw a moment ago had color that I had sprayed on, I'd applied some other color through stencils, done some various things that achieved one look. What I'm going to show you how to do now is very simple. Anyone can do this, but more importantly, it's instantly recognizable as something completely different. So I'm going to work in, this is a different art journal, this has water, excuse me, this one doesn't have watercolor paper, it has mixed media paper and it's going to work just the same regardless of whether or not you use this or watercolor paper. Again, I have waterfall green. This has been pre-shaken. I'm just going to give it another little bit of a shake to make certain that the color is all distributed. And then this technique works best with a big fat oval mop brush. This is a one inch oval mop brush. I have my bucket of clean water over to the side and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to lay down some water in the center of this. I'm not going to, you could, but I'm not going to choose to cover the entire page spread. I'm going to create kind of a center panel here that I can work in at a later date. So I've got my water in here and all I'm going to do is lay down the center area here and a border all the way around. The water is what's going to help control where the color goes as I apply it in a moment, but for now, and it will also help dilute the color because I want this to be a little bit more transparent. So for now, all I want to do is just lay this down with enough water, and I'm kind of turning my head so I can see in the light, or rather the reflection in the light, and I can see where the water is because I know that that's where the color is going to go. Now I could certainly push it past these edges that I'm creating, but I don't have to. Alright, so that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is, this is again waterfall green, I'm going to put down a reasonable amount of this here. I'm going to need enough to cover this. And I'm going to pick this up again with a wet brush. And now I'm thinning this color quite deliberately. I don't want it. I want a wash effect, almost like a watercolorist would achieve. And I don't want a ton of color. So if I think that's too much, I can just come back and dip in some water. And obviously there's some water on here, which will thin it. So now I'm just going to lay this color on, and I'm going to let it flow however it wants to. I'm just going to kind of guide it. That little crusty thing there, that's just from the edge of the bottle. Again, that's some color that dried on there. Those will come right off. You don't need to worry about that. So I'm just going to let this color flow. I'm going to let the water help move it around, and I can direct it with the brush, but I can also let this be very freeform and very flowing and very easy. You can see that the color starts to creep because it will wick in the water. You can also see this marvelous pearlescent shimmer, which I am so fond of. It really is the reason that I reached for these inks to begin with. And then I discovered how nice they are, even in the, the non-pearlescent pearlescent versions, and I was immediately sold. So again, I'm just going to kind of lay this color in here. Now, ideally, I would hit this with a heat tool to dry it, but I want to move on to something else without wasting your time watching paint dry because there's nothing fun about that. So I'm going to slide this out of the way and it will dry on its own and I can always come back and babysit it. And then the next thing that I want to do, this is one that I use this technique on. Now I've gone a little bit heavier with the color here and I've added two. You can see that you don't, all these colors are intermixable across the line. Whether you're using a pearlescent version together and you want to mix two or you want to mix a pearlescent into one that isn't, they all work really well. So you can see that I've used two colors here. Now one of the interesting things that you can do, let me just clean this out of the way for one second so I can, I wanted to use this again, but it's fine, we'll put some more down. So one of the interesting things that you can do, I like the idea of borders, and obviously I have one created here, but I can emphasize the border by coming in with a pit pen and just sketching around the perimeter of the color, and that really helps set it off from that white frame around the outside of the page, which creates a very different look. 
I like borders. I think that they help really define a page, and it's their, their technique that I employ a lot. But you can see how quick it was to do that and what a really nice effect that this has. Now, the other thing that's really easy to do, that's a lot of fun, is spattering. And for that, this time I think I'm going to pick up... What color am I going to pick up? Let's pick up this pink. So this is Sundown Magenta. Again, I'm going to give it a shake. I'm going to slide that a little bit closer to you, and I'm going to put down a little bit of color. Now this technique does not take a lot of color, and I don't have a lot of acreage here to cover, so I'm not going to put too much out. And for this, I'm going to use a very well-worn, well-loved fan brush. This is just a number four fan. I like fan brushes for this spattering effect. So what I want to do is really thin this color out. The, the thinner it is, the easier it's going to be to spatter. So all I'm going to do is hold this brush. I'm right-handed. I'm going to hold this in my right hand. I'm going to extend my left forefinger, and I'm going to tap. And you can see how easy it is to get this great spattering look. It's a very effective technique for adding a little bit of busyness to a background. You can certainly put this on a lot heavier if you choose, but both of these are really simple and fun techniques. Rubber stamping is probably not the first technique that comes to mind when you think about working with the F&W acrylic inks, but it's actually really easy to do and you get nice results. This is the page background that we spattered with the Sundown Magenta a couple of moments ago. It's all dry now, and I brought in Genesis Green. This is probably my favorite color in the entire line. So I'm going to put a little bit out here on my work surface, whether you use a nonstick craft sheet type surface or a piece of palette paper. Either will work, but obviously you need something that the ink is not going to absorb into. All I'm going to do is spread this out with my finger. Now when I ink this stamp with the F&W ink, I'm not going to get the same kind of perfect image that I would as if I inked this with stays on or another regular ink pad style ink. But you can see, well first of all I got a little bit too much in the center there, so I'm going to stamp some of it off. But you can see that I've got ink on the important parts here, and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to lightly press this in place and I'm going to lift and again you don't get a super crisp image but that's not the goal here. The goal is to add shimmering pearlescent color in a way that you ordinarily probably wouldn't think of and it's a technique that really extends the things that you can do to your art journal pages and with your rubber stamps. Really super easy like I said and great results and you can see, let's just wipe my fingers off here, you can see that the color shimmers when it's wet and it's going to shimmer beautifully when it's dry. There are 66 colors in the F&W acrylic ink line, 34 original, 4 shimmer, 6 fluorescent, and 22 pearlescent. They're intermixable and they work really well with all other acrylic water-based products.